Hello and welcome to Insights with Thomas Caldwell on August the 18th, 2022. Tom, in a world of confusion and negativity, investment success still rests on a few simple principles. Now that is the headline that we used on an ad well over 20 years ago. But the amazing part about that is that it still stands today. So let's talk about investment success and principles. Well, the, the principles are really important. The, the operating system of how you think. Because if you have a framework of thinking, looking at markets or looking at events, then you can interpret things differently and you have a discipline in place when all the slings and arrows of misfortune start coming at you. So we wrote this thing down. The first principle is do not use a short time frame to define success or failure. Investing is a marathon, not a 100-yard dash. I can buy a stock today, and I don't know what the market's going to do tomorrow morning. It can be down, I can be down right off the get-go, but if my thinking is right, if I hang in over time, it'll play out the way it should. And very often, I've been you know, disappointed in a position I've taken in the early stages, but if I hang in, I make money. And so that's very important. Realize you're there for a longer term. Don't get faked out or faked in by short-term market moves. The second one is time in the market is more important than market timing. You hear market timing, oh, we can't out-time the market. Well, you can time events. Uh, that's important. You can work on that volatility basis if you wish to. But time in the market is very important because a lot of the money that I've made in markets has been able to hold in over a period of time. I'm, not, I'm smart enough to know what can go up in a market. I'm just not smart enough to know exactly when. So if I can hang in, the time in the market is very important. Quell your emotions is the third one. Markets have no place for emotions. The, mar the stocks don't know that you own them. Just no emotions. That means fear on the downside or greed on the upside. Control your emotion. Periods of negativity, uh, difficulty, confusion usually represent long-term buying opportunities. I generally trade the larger corporations, and they, can, they don't grow as fast as small companies, but if I can buy them during a downdraft, something negative going on, it could be the market, it could be the industry, or that company, during a downdraft, that usually presents an opportunity to me. Another thing is, that uh, something I've noticed, that bull markets, that is markets that are moving up, tend to ignore bad news. Bear markets ignore good news. Lots of good news, markets going down, there's market sentiment. And if you look at the markets these days, there's a lot of negativity. Oh, interest rates. Oh, inflation. Oh, you know, deficits. Oh, you know, recession. All this nonsense going on out there. And, and everybody analyzes it, hyper-analyzes uh, this thing. As far as I, I'm concerned, look at the market. The market is actually moving up in the last little while. It's telling you something. That's almost the definition of a bull market or a nascent bull market at any rate. Invest in quality. Never sacrifice quality for yield, particularly if you're buying bonds. You know, if you buy a bond, that's like lending somebody money. The interest rate doesn't matter. I want my principal back. I want my money back. I tend to focus on government bonds. Yes, I make less yield. But you know, the great financial crisis of 08 was caused by people not buying U.S. Treasuries, but buying these junk packages that yielded them only a quarter of 1% more than a Treasury bond. The whole financial crisis was based on one quarter of 1% greed. Never sacrifice quality for yield. Don't borrow to buy securities. I hate margin accounts. If you borrow to buy securities, time is now your enemy. And by the way, you've really added to your own stress, stress and emotional pressure. You don't want that. I, 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 you know, it's one thing in a market to be down 10 or 20 percent. It's another thing to be wiped out. And that's what happens when you borrow a lot of money to buy securities. Invest over a period of time. Young people always say to me, well, I don't have any money to invest right now, so I'm going to borrow some from the bank because they're going to give us all kinds of money. No, 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 no. What to do, if you got a job and you got you know, $500 a month, 1000 or if you're making a lot of money, $10,000 a month. Invest over time, and that'll correct. And you know, the market volatility will then work for you with dollar cost averaging. So invest over a period of time. If you get in that habit, that money that's already gone out every month, you won't even notice it, and you'll be amazed how you accumulate money. I've had people come to me years later, say, I forgot I even had this thing, and I got X large dollars because I didn't know I was doing that. I forgot about it. So I think that's a great thing to do. I think the other thing is, is use a professional investment advisor. I know I'm talking my own position here, but to quell your emotions, to refine your ideas, to, to not get caught up in the hype of a market or an economy or the news cycle or whatever, have someone, preferably a pro, 
uh, who does this as a living and has some experience, because experience and second opinions will keep you out of an awful lot of trouble. And, and those are the basic principles we have. Now, they're on our website because, you know, I went through these fairly quickly for you. But these will help in having a framework to interpret events and hopefully to invest successfully. Thank you so much for your insights, Tom. They were wonderful. Thank you. And thank you all for watching. Bye for now.